thing I've ever held. No, it's not. <laughs> Steve, will you hold this? Yes. <laughs> oh my God, I think I can speak on behalf of all of us that I'm so happy you're alive. <laughs> you're still alive, he didn't die, guys. <laughs> oh, I'm so worried. Oh my God, You're, this is one of the bravest actors, I have to tell you, to take on the role of Mitch Kessler. Honestly, we, <clears throat> you know, the morning show had to hire a, a talented, um, unimpeachable man to play that role, and that kind of narrowed the list down, you know. <laughs> well, just to Steve. <laughs> that was it. And it was my dream to work with you. It's a dream come true, and there's so much more we're gonna do together. I still wanna do the remake of After Hours. Anyway, um, oh God, and thank you for coming here today and, 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 and presenting me with this honor. And, and while we salute the women in entertainment, I think we need to salute all of the men who support us women and collaborate with us, because a lot of them are in this room today. Oh. So thank you. Thank you for this incredible award. Oh, the Sherry Lansing Leadership Award. Where are you, Sherry? <sighs> you know, when I heard I was, I was receiving this award, my first thought was, what the f what? <laughs> I mean, honestly, to join the ranks of Oprah and Barbara Streisand, Walters, Shonda Rhimes, Diane Keaton, Jane Fonda, Helen Mirren, Meryl Streep, Jen Lor I mean, it, it on and on. Um, and Reese Witherspoon, who's my partner in crime, my sister who really makes my days so joyful. I mean, it's an honor I mean, you know, to be in this sorority. It's, it's just an honor of the highest magnitude. I mean, if I, and if I went back to, to my 19-year-old self uh, in New York waitressing tables, and auditioning for every off, 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 not even close to Broadway show. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was like, and, and someone said to me that one day you're, you will be receiving the Sherry Lansing Leadership Award. I would have looked that person straight in the face like they were absolutely insane, and I would have, I would have said, who's Sherry Lansing? I mean, obviously, I didn't know a lot about the business back then, but I have learned a few things along the way. And um, Sherry Lansing, people really like to throw the word uh, trailblazer around, but in your case, it literally, it is what you have been. You have, you have blazed a trail for the rest of us to follow. The first woman to run a studio, with strings and strings of box office hits and Academy Award winning films to your name. You truly paved the way for us women to have the voices and the platforms that we have today. And somehow you remained one of the kindest and most generous people. <laughs> truly. You know, towards the end of Friends, um, I was invited, sorry. God, you guys. Towards the end of Friends, I was invited to lunch with Sherry, and uh, who at the time was the chairman of Paramount Pictures. I was so nervous, scared out of my gourd, kind of like I am right now. And we, we talked about a lot of things, but one thing I will never forget was, uh, was a question that Sherry asked me. What do you imagine for your future? Uh, seems like a simple question. I was stumped. My future, okay, well, I barely have today planned out. I have a run-through later today. Maybe I'm gonna go to Hugo's with my girlfriends for dinner. I don't know, that's kind of all I got. <laughs> but I thought about Sherry's question through the years as my future unfolded, and uh, I gotta tell you, I would have never predicted half uh, of what's happened or what reportedly has happened according to the tablets. Um, but the, this question about my future and what I imagined for it has been this like riddle that I've been trying to solve throughout the years. So cut to a few years later, uh, a friend gifts me with a reading with a numerologist. <laughs> it's California. Uh, now, 
at this time, I don't know how numerology works. I don't know if it works. Um, but after this numerologist did her mysterious arithmetic on me, she said that apparently my numbers very clearly indicated that I am a late bloomer. Um, and I said, late bloomer? Really? Are you sure? Are you, I mean, I feel like I've kind of partially bloomed <laughs> a little bit. I don't know, maybe she didn't have a TV. Anyway, um, <laughs> at first I was kind of, you know, I was a little taken aback by this label as if I was, you know, an underachiever who hadn't reached her full potential. But as I sat with the idea of late bloomer, it started to grow on me. You know, maybe I haven't done my best work yet as, a, as an artist or as a human being. Maybe I am just beginning. So I started to embrace this idea of being a late bloomer or, you know, of just beginning. And then this beautiful award with such a handsome man holding it. <laughs> this beautiful award, sorry. Isn't he though? I love him so much. I just can't. But so this beautiful award suddenly comes my way and it makes me feel like I'm half, halfway through this marathon and I'm getting this enormous second win because all of a sudden all of you guys are like running beside me and cheering me on, holding signs saying, just keep going, keep going, you got this girl. And you're like throwing Dixie cups of water at my face and power bars and oh, I just gotta tell you, it feels so good. It really does, it feels so good. I got into this business mostly because I wanted to make people laugh because, you know, that's what healed me as a kid. And, you know, give people a moment of levity or escape, because life can sometimes, or a lot of times, especially lately, feel like a, a struggle. But um, somewhere along the way, my motivation for being an actor and a performer, producer, my motivation for telling stories deepened because I deepened as a person, and um, the idea of making some kind of contribution got sparked in me. And in getting to be a part of so many different kinds of stories, I realized that what we get to do as storytellers can be so emotionally healing for people. And my acting coach always said to me, acting is a healing craft, and I truly understand that now. I really, I really do. I think stories also help us, you know, shine a light on cultural illnesses like sexual harassment and racial discrimination, gender bias in the workplace, you know, areas that we, we, we've tried to address on the morning show. Um, stories also can give us a much needed laugh after we've done all of that very heavy lifting. Um, oh, and it's scientifically proven that laughter is good for your health, and that's actually true. So. I'm very glad that I could be a vitamin of sorts for people out there from time to time. Um, and, and knowing Sherry, she probably asked me that question all those years ago, knowing that she was planting a seed. And that probably was her plan all along because future to Sherry, who's a true philanthropist at heart, is synonymous with contribution the idea that we're all here to contribute something to the world. So thank you, Sherry, for planting that seed. I'm so, so grateful to you. I really am. And I'm grateful to all of these stunning, gorgeous women in entertainment and men. The Hollywood Reporter, thank you for this reminder to just keep going, keep striving keep pushing boundaries in storytelling and, and in the business the way you showed us, Sherry, how to, how to do it. Thank you very much, everybody.